Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yes, today guys, on this episode of John Sucks at Video Games, we are gonna revisit the gaming PC. That is right guys, cause you know what? We are not done. And you know what we need to do? We need to make this case even cooler. Now if you guys saw the build series, it was like a six part build series where we built a gaming PC. And you know what? I haven't built a gaming PC in a long time and it was a lot of fun. So be sure to go back and watch that series. Anyway. Our gaming PC was a massive success and it's super cool. And you know what, we have this whole kind of black and red theme going, it's very sexy, you know. And so I thought we would continue the black and red and really amplify the redness of this case, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna install LED strip lights right here, okay? I picked these up on Amazon, very inexpensive, like $12, $15 for like, I don't know, 50 feet of this, okay? And these strips right here, are, again, are 12 volt DC. When they get power, they light up and they glow red, very, very, very red. So we're gonna install these inside the case. And then also, we're gonna install a dimmer. Yes, a dimmer. So we can control the, the brightness and intensity of the LEDs. How cool is that? And also, turn it off. Because I didn't want the LEDs to be lit all the time. I wanted to be able to turn them off or dim them or have them fully bright, whatever. So anyway, guys, enough of that. Let's go over to the computer over there and get to work on our LED strip mod on our gaming PC. All right, so our gaming PC is over here and it's underneath the desk. And uh, so I wanna pull it out really quick because we wanna kind of identify where we're gonna tap in and grab our voltages, okay? Because we need 12 volts DC because the LEDs need 12 volts to work. And so I'm kinda, I'm, I'm curious as to where we're gonna grab our 12 volts. And I, I kinda suspect I know where because there's a, a bunch of extra fan headers on the bottom of the case. And I think we're gonna tap into one of those. So let's come over here. And yes, I have the, 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 uh, the, the, the PCs on right now. Look at this, I really need to dust this thing already, huh? So let's open up the case here. Okay, so we have uh, some voltage right here going to the fan, as you guys can see that right there. Okay, so we have voltage coming here, and I, I believe that's 12 volts, okay? And then let's see what else is hanging out down here. Okay, so we have this connector right here. Look at this, it's got female pins in there. And I wanna check the voltages on that to see if we have 12 volts, okay? So I'm gonna take my multimeter and we're gonna just kinda get in there and, and see what's what and what's going on. I, I suppose I can go online and read the color coding for the wires, but we don't need to do that. We have the multimeter and we can just kinda test it out here. So let's come down here and uh, let's see where we have 12 volts, okay? I'm gonna put this on DC voltage like so and so i'm just gonna poke around i'm assuming black is positive i think yellow is uh is 12 volts here let's let's go like this yeah okay so black and yellow is 12 volts so we could tap in right there and uh so i'm, I'm assuming both of these blacks are ground yes and then the red's probably five volts for logic yeah okay so we got five volts on the red wire and then on the yellow wire, we have 12 volts, okay? So this is where we're gonna tap in, and this is where we're gonna grab our 12 volts uh, for our LEDs. Now, how are we gonna tap into this? I I've been thinking about this. Uh, I think we might have a Molex connector that can match this. Let let's kind of take a look here, because my, uh, my motherboard came with a bunch of extra connectors, and so did uh, my power supply. So let's kind of take a look in here and see what we have. If we have a female connector, and we do right here, okay? So we can use this, and I can just cut these wires and we can splice into this. So I think we're gonna just use this then. So we just need, get, need to get yellow and ground. And if, and if you see here, we're coming in, we're coming into the connector that's on the case, which is this guy right here. I have a fe female Molex right here. Okay, and then we have, we'll have a yellow and a black. We'll get us our, our uh, 12 volts. All right, good, so we have a plan. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna disconnect, actually I'm gonna power down my PC. We're gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna take this door and we're gonna bring it to the garage and we're gonna work out there. And uh, so I'm gonna disconnect the, uh, the little Molex pin that's on the fan right here. So the fan's now disconnected and I'm gonna turn the PC off and then let's go to the garage and get to work and get this all set up.
All right, guys, we are in the garage, and uh, I already have the uh, the door of the PC case out here ready. And what we're gonna do here, I think is pretty straightforward. I think it's gonna go pretty smooth, actually. I hope, at least in theory, it should. All right, so here's our door, okay? And what are we gonna do? Well, here's the plan, okay? So we have this strip of LEDs, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line kind of the perimeter of this door with these strips, okay? And these are self-adhesive. They have the 3M backing on them, okay? And these things we can cut, okay? And if you look here, there's little lines every, every foot or so, every actually few inches or so. And it's saying, okay, it's safe to cut here. And they're, and they're labeled positive and negative. And the idea here is that you cut these and then you make the joint again using wire. And you'll see what I mean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our, our LED strips throughout here, okay? And the idea here again is that they're gonna be right here. You're not gonna be able to see them from the outside of the cabinet. And these LEDs are actually pointing inside at the guts, okay? So what I want to do is I want to put a square or a rectangle around this window, okay? And I think that we should also put one around the fan opening right here, okay? And I think that should pretty much do it. I don't know if we want to go crazy and put it all over the perimeter. I think at the very least we want to go around this window because that's going to look pretty hot. So why don't we go ahead and just cut this. Now they have a little like plug here so you can put like a wall ward on here. We're just going to get rid of that. And I'm just going to take my side cutters and I'm, I'm sure you could just use scissors here. And I'm just gonna cut this right here, okay? And I cut it right in the line, and then we have two little solder pads right there, okay? And then this is gonna go like here to here. So let's go ahead and cut this right here, okay? Now I'm just gonna do all my cuts first. So we're gonna put one up here, and then we want the same length right below it. So let's come in here and cut the same length to go right below it. All right. I'm just going to trim it a little better. Scissors probably would work better than this. And then we're going to put one here. We're going to put one here. Okay. And then I do think that we should maybe just put one vertically all the way right here. So let's, and I got to kind of think about the wiring, okay? So if we put one right here, we can jumper this one to this one, and that'll take care of that vertical strip right here, like so. And then when we come down here, we're going to go all the way across, okay? So I'm going to take this right here. This is a little mutilated. Yeah, it's not really obvious where the pads are right now on that one. I'm going to, maybe I should grab some scissors. I'm just going to sacrifice this. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. We got two pat. You know, I'm going to grab some scissors. I think it might be smarter to use scissors because I'm kind of butchering it a little bit. Hang on. Okay, I got some scissors here. I just want to make sure it's nice and clean and obvious where we're going to solder and the pads are nice and clean. Yeah, that's way better. These ones look pretty good. So, all right, so this one here is going to go like so. And let's cut this one right here. And I'm just going to try to cut as far to the right of the pads as I can so we have enough meat left over. All right, so this one's going to go right here. So we got this, this, and then we need one to come around the bottom, and then one to go straight up. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, attach this one right now. So I'm just gonna use the self-adhesive back here. And hopefully the adhesive quality is decent. Okay. So the back is kind of coppery, but I think it has some kind of coating on it. And it's not conductive. All right, so let's Put this right here. Okay. And that stuff really, that stuck on there really great. So there's our first strip. And so we could come in here and grab that. It's 12 volts or over here. So we do have some options to grab this. 
some little tiny jumper wires right there. We'll see how this plays out. I'm tempted to... So if I were to go like this, I'm just trying to map out the wiring, okay? Because we're going to have to make these connections in the corners here with wire. And then ultimately, we need to feed voltage into this too. And uh, so this is going to be kind of the direction of our Molex here. So I want the voltage to kind of all go this way. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and just put this one down here. Okay, so now we got all of our strips in. Now we got to connect them together, okay? And our uh, exit is going to be right here. So let's talk about the plan here too because um, we have this guy. And actually, I want to take this apart because we're going we're gonna to use this. We're going to decase it though. Now this has headers on it right here. So you have voltage in, voltage out, and then uh, um, positive and negative in, and then positive and negative out. But this header actually comes right off, okay? And so we just got to remember that left is in and right is out. So I want to decase this though, because this is ugly. And I think we're going to try to mount this from the inside of the cabinet and have the, uh, the knob poke out somewhere. And I haven't figured out quite where that somewhere is yet. I was looking at the top of the case. Maybe we could have it sneak out there. And so we're going to have to kind of plan ahead a little bit here too with the wiring because we definitely need to have enough slack to run to this. Because basically the voltage from the power supply is going to go to this and then it's going to come out of this to our LEDs. But let's open this thing up and see what's in here and just get rid of this case. Now, if we didn't, if we weren't going to mess around with this potentiometer, all we would do right now is just connect the dots here uh, with all of these strips, and then run a positive and a negative to our Molex connector that would then plug into that that fan header that we uh, saw in the cabinet. But we're going to add this little extra variable so we can kind of control the lights and turn them on or turn them off and and make them dimmer. And I don't know how this thing's going to behave because I've never done this before and I've never used one of these, but. It's supposed to work. Okay, so let's see what's in here. So we've got this crappy little PCB and then our pot. So let's... Okay, this is going to be pretty easy then. So let me get my pliers here and let's take this pot off. I'm also tempted to put this on the door, but I'm not sure if that's going to work. I, I, we, we should really check clearance if we do that. So I'm just removing this little nut. Okay, so that should just come out. So when we go downstairs, we can just drill a hole through our cabinet, poke this thing through, throw this nut on there, and then throw this knob on, which I'm going to have to replace because silver does not work with the black and red. But for now, we can use this red one, I mean the silver one. And then we have to remember the polarity of this thing, which was like this. So this thing was in here, like so. Was it like this, or? Yeah, it was like that. Let me see if it's labeled on the board. It's not. So this only goes on one way. 
Okay, so we can be we could figure it out because it was like this. So voltage in, voltage out. Anyway, we'll come back to that later and when we go downstairs. Okay, so let's let's start wiring this guy up here. Um, I've got some spare wire over here. I'm just gonna use this spare red and black wire. I've got some extra hookup wire, and this is really I don't know. This is like 20 gauge wire. So let me just grab some red and black and. I'm just going to strip a bunch of this. We don't need a lot here. Okay, so let me explain what I've done so far. So, basically I just flowed solder onto the headers of each of these and I just took some wire, some very light gauge wire that I stole from uh, the Molex connector uh, from the fan. There was some excess wire that we weren't gonna need. And so I went positive to positive and negative to negative over here. And then I took my continuity meter, uh, my, my actually my multimeter on continuity to verify that our solder joint was good here. And, and when, it, when you have it on continuity, you know, it beeps, okay? That means that point A to point B are connected. So if we come over here and go negative to negative, we get a beep. Positive to positive, we get a beep, okay? So that means that that's a good solder joint. Now, if we go negative to positive, doesn't beep, and that's what we want. It means there's no short. And if I go, you know, positive to ground here on this um, case, no beep, negative to the case, no beep. And if I even come over here and put my lead on negative right here and then negative over here, we get a beep. Positive over here, positive over here, we get a beep. So that's a good solder joint, okay? And, and nothing is shorted. And then I also added a couple wires over here, okay? Connect, connecting negative and negative and positive to positive. And basically we just, negative and negative is good. Positive to positive, it's good. There's no short. And then if I come all the way at the other side here, negative, I come, and uh, I mean, look at, I, I can go all the way around here now. So this is connected completely, like from this end right here, negative, all the way to this end. Hear that? And then positive. Okay. So these three, one, two, three strips are completely connected. So now we got to add uh, wires for this one here and this one and this one and this one okay and i'm thinking that our exit point's going to be around either here or here i haven't decided yet actually this would be pretty easy to yeah maybe we should exit right there um okay so i'm looking at this and i think that we should connect this to this okay that should be pretty easy and the way i'm doing this again is i'm just adding solder to the pads Okay, and, and I'm just heating the pad up, and I'm adding some solder to it. And, and really, this is all the solder I'm using is what I'm putting on these pads when I tin them. Adding heat to the solder, I mean to the pad, and then solder after it gets hot enough. All right, so we can join those two. Um, this one here can probably go to here. And then we're going to have to run a wire across. We can probably go from here to here. I'm just trying to do this the easiest way. And I don't want to, I'm trying not to double up on the pads with wire. If I can just get one connection per pad, that would be ideal. So I'm just adding solder to all these pads. And so basically I tinned all of these pads, this, this. Um, this and that. So we're going to go from here to here. And then we'll go from here to here and here to here. And then everything should be connected. And then the only other connection we got to make, I think, is going to go probably from here to here. Or maybe, maybe here to here. That should be okay. It would be kind of nice if it was up here, wouldn't it? Just kind of out of the way. I don't know, we'll play it by ear, but let's go ahead and just, I'll, I'll do a couple with you guys and then uh, we'll come back and it's just kind of rinse and repeat here. So I'm going to take my wire, I'm going to heat up 
this positive pad, melt the solder I put on there, and just kind of sneak my wire in here till the wire's on there, till the wire kind of sucks up the solder. Let go. All right, that's good. And I'm going to come up here and go positive. I really should tin this wire first. It's it's kind of like all strandy on me. It's actually a good connection. You don't really need a lot of uh, exposed wire either because uh, it just doesn't take much at all to get on these little pads. That's on there good. I'm going to come in here, I think, and just kind of trim that back a little bit. Because we just have a little bit of excess wire here. Okay, so let's do our negative one there. Okay guys, um, so I did all the connections, right? I connected this, to this, to this, to that, to here, to here. So these are all in the circuit, okay? This one right here, I haven't connected yet because I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do that. And actually I'm looking at this and I've kind of got an idea that I think might be kind of clean. I'm thinking about hot gluing this to here, okay? And then we're gonna drill a hole through here and have our pot stick through and then we'll run our power wires down here to the Molex with this one. And then our power out, we will run um, from here to probably here. And then we're gonna have to run wires from here to here, okay? We still have the jumper to over here. But basically, I need to just dump the power out to any, any of these strips because it's gonna come out of here and I just need to make, it has to make contact with just one of them. And then because everything's all connected, it'll feed um, all the other ones with the 12 volts here, but I, I kind of like this idea. I, I like having it all self-contained on the door. Like if we hot glue this and then drill a hole here, hole here and put this pot through there. But the one thing I'm worried about though is that if this will clear the cabinet because in the, in the cabinet itself, in, in the case, right here is where all the drives are, okay? And, and I don't think this is, is going to cause a problem. I'm thinking about just kind of gluing it in place right there and then running downstairs and just seeing if, if it'll fit. Now, obviously the bottom here has, uh, has uh, pads, right? And this is conductive. So we don't want to have this making contact at all with our cabinet. So I'm just going to put hot glue over all of these so we don't have a metal on metal contact. I actually kind of wanted to get Velcro because Velcro would work pretty great, but I don't have any Velcro. So I just want to make kind of a mess on here. Like so. Let's see if this is going to work. All right. So now I'm gonna just gonna throw some more on here and we're gonna just glue this on really quick. And hot glue is great because it's far from permanent. I need more glue. I need to put something in here. All right, and 
I'm just gonna kind of make a big blobby mess here. Don't really care. All right, let's get this out here before it cools. All right, it's on pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go downstairs and I'm just gonna just do like a dry run and see if I can actually put the door on with this thing here. That's on there actually pretty great. So let me, let me go test it out and be back. Okay, I, uh, I just tested it and it totally clears. Um, so this is like right where the drives are, but it's no problem. I'm gonna actually quickly use whatever, whatever glue I have left here to just kind of cover up my connections here, my solder joints, just so there's no risk of uh, just getting a short. And I'm just putting solder basically just on, over the solder. I'm putting hot glue over the solder pads just so we don't have naked connections. And also, I've decided that we're not going to use this strip. I was looking at the cabinet, and this is lighting up absolutely nothing. So we're just about done here. So I'm just going to put some solder, solder, some hot glue over our connections just to protect them. All right. That way we don't have any exposed connections. Okay. All right, so what do we do now? So let's bring our power connection down, okay? So this header goes on here, and if we're to reference the little diagram that's on the case, it was like this. So this is voltage in and voltage out. So voltage in is on this side, okay? So voltage in is the voltage coming from the power supply. Okay, so let's take a yellow wire for our positive for the 12 volts. And let's take a black wire for a negative right here. And I think I'm going to make like a little twisted pair really quick. So if you take your drill and you just kind of stick the wires in there. And then you can just kind of go like this. Except the other way. Hang on. There we go. So we'll make a nice little twisted pair. Okay. And then we're going to run that to here. And then that's going to go to our Molex. Nice and slick. It's a heavier gauge wire, so it's not super tight. We could put some zip strips on that too. And so let's run our positive to positive and negative to negative. And then I'm going to use this as a reference point here. So voltage in, negative is on the outside, which is that one right there. So let's get a standard screwdriver here. And we can just kind of take this off. Okay. like so and then voltage positive all right so there's our voltage in Okay, so now we need our voltage out, which I'm going to have go to probably right here or right here. I don't know what's easier. So we need two wires because now we got to dump voltage out of this thing into our circuit. And uh, so I'll probably have it come out of here and let's go to these headers right here. These are easier to get to. So let me find some wires for that job. Okay guys, I actually just made this connection right here. So I just ran the positive out to the positive on this LED strip right here just because it's the closest. 
and I ran the negative out, which is the black here, to the negative on this LED strip. And now, if we were to test continuity, we have continuity, because the power is gonna come out of here, right? So if the power comes out of here, and I have continuity at every one of these, every one of them is gonna light up. So let's kind of double check our work here. So if we were to, so let's go to the negative here. So that's the negative out, okay, the ground. Okay, so negative, good, 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 and then this one over here. Okay, so the grounds are all in circuit, okay? And if I, let's do the positive which is the next one here, positive, 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 and then positive on this little guy. All right, so our work is all good, all right? So now all we need to do is just uh, make our power connection, and we're gonna use the, this yellow and black one wires here, the wires here, and then here's my Molex, um, so this is the one we're gonna cannibalize. And we're just gonna cut these wires off because we really just want this, this female connector here that we're gonna use to make connection with the uh, power supply. And what I'll do, let's strip this stuff back. Okay. And then we're just gonna make connection with this here. And then what I'm gonna do is get some heat shrink tubing here. And we'll make it look as neat as we can. Slide this down in here. Okay. Yeah, I know, there's a gazillion ways to do this tie here. You could do the Western Union. <laughs> you wanna do that? Here. Uh, is it kinda like this? Solder's going to do all the work anyway. It's just a function of how much of a glob of, of crap do you want when you put the, uh, the, the uh, heat shrink tubing over this. Solder this real quick. And if you guys are not familiar with soldering, you're basically, you want to heat up the part and then when the part gets hot enough, the, the solder will basically get, will suck up to it. And I'm just trying to just do this by resting my soldering iron on the wire from underneath. And there it goes. I, don't, I could just put pressure on it. I, I just don't want to put pressure on the cover for this. All right. There's that one. Let's get the next one here. It looks good. Okay, now that we have our wires soldered here, we gotta just put our 
heat shrink tubing on here and I'm just gonna take a lighter just close it up like so now let's do this one So the wild card here, I think, is the um, LED dimmer. I sure hope that thing works. Okay. Looks good. Looks pro. Let's let that cool off. Um, I'm going to heat up my glue gun. Actually, I want to throw some zip strips on this. What we're going to do is this. Let me get... Let's try these guys. So let's put this came in this little kit I have. Let's try one of these right about here. And then let's put one so let's take a zip strip throw it through here. see if we can neaten this up but just a little bit here like so and then I'm gonna just throw some zip strips around these just to kind of neaten this pack up here all right Just gonna throw one on my twisted pair just to make sure it just stays kind of closed. And at the end here, where I have the heat shrink tubing. Okay. All right, guys, we're about ready to try this here. I'm not going to drill the hole for the for the pot just yet. I want to make sure that our work is good, and then if I know it is, then we'll drill a hole and we'll throw this pot through the uh, through the side of the cabinet. <laughs> I keep calling this thing a cabinet because I'm so used to saying that with my arcade videos. <laughs> no, it's not a cabinet. It's a ca it's a it's a case. <laughs> the PC guys call them cases. I got it. All right. Let's do this right here. So let me just trim these all back. So by the way, how do we do? What do you, what do you think? Is, is our work good and neat? I kind of think it is. I'm going to heat up the hot glue gun and just throw a little bit of hot glue on that one, on those new connections, and we'll come back. So let me heat up the gun. And like I said, we'll come right back here. Okay, guys, we're all done here. So I, I threw some hot glue on this connection right here. And I, I put a lot on there just because that's the main power connection right here. Uh, the 12 volts is coming from here to there. So I just threw a big glob on there. And this is on really secure. Like I said, we're gonna drill this hole after. I just wanna make sure this thing all works. And this was actually a good idea before I glue this. I mean, before I drill a hole and we're, and we're kind of stuck with it. But I think overall we look pretty good. All of our connections are nice and secure. We did continuity tests. Um, it looks relatively neat. And uh, I think we're ready to put this on our game. Our PC. <laughs> Not our arcade game. Um, I do like that we have our, our two connectors here. You know, this way we can completely disconnect this from the uh, from the from the uh, PC case and and the door can kind of just be on its own and uh, 
I think that's good. So let's go in the basement and let's try this out and, and find out if our work was good. <laughs> Okay, guys, we're back in the basement and we are ready to do this. <laughs> are you excited? Uh, are we going to blow up the computer? What's going to happen here? I have no idea. <laughs> th th this is all good on paper. It this should work no problem. So, all right, let's make our, our 12 volt connection right here. Okay. And. All right, well, I guess we could just hook the fan up too, just to make sure everything's working still. Okay, so here's our potentiometer and we're gonna adjust this after we turn it on. So here we go, you guys ready? We're about to do this. All right, here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> it works. All right, let's see if our, our oh yeah. Oh yeah, our dimmer totally works. Look at that, guys. That is badass. That is a success. Okay, so um, the computer's booting. Hang on, I'm just gonna. It's still like in the BIOS. All right, so let's um, let's drill our, our hole here, and I'm gonna try to get it as close to the window as possible. So right about here. So let's see what size bit we need. That looks good. This is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> All right. All right, so let's drill a hole in the cabinet here. And I say right about here. Okay, we got metal uh, filings like everywhere, so I gotta really shake this off because those are most definitely conductive, and we don't want to cause a short. So that's. Oh man, they're all underneath. Are they under the PCB? Let's see. Let's see how we look here. I think I'm gonna get some compressed air. I gotta make sure I get all those metal filings out of here. Okay. Okay, so now we're ready. I know I should have drilled that in the garage, but we gotta go a little bit bigger here. Get that through. Let's go up the next size here. Okay. That's perfect. So our pot goes through like that and there's a washer. And a nut. And then I'll look for some kind of like low profile knob like black. Look at that. <laughs> pliers down here. That's good. Okay. So there we go guys, what do you think? Is that cool or what? So let's make our 12 volt connection again and close it up and see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in. All right guys, I wanna show you what I discovered here. Um, I actually made a mistake because this strip right here is conflicting with this right here. So we cannot have a strip right here. I'm wrong. That was not the right thing to do. 
So if we go like this, you can see this strip here is interfering with this, this, this bar right here. So I'm going to go to the garage, actually. I'm going to remove this strip from the equation. Uh, we can't have it. So I'm going to take this one out. And as a result, we're going to have to run power to here because these two are then isolated. That's fine. I'll just jump our power from here to here. But, yeah, I got to get rid of this. Yep, measure twice, cut, cut once. Is that what they say? <laughs> so... All right, I'm just going to go to the garage. I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to run two wires from, from from here to here, and or actually more like from here to here, and that should do it then. So, all right, I'll be right back. Oh, we are so close to being done. <laughs> well, at least we know our, our work worked. So, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back from the garage. So we removed this strip right here. And uh, so I had to re-solder wires. I had to add actually wires here and here. Um, just we had voltage going to here, here, and here. So everything, actually I put a jumper from here to here, and then a jumper from here to here. And now everything is all connected again. Uh, super annoying, to be honest. You know, this isn't hard. I, I, I will say uh, this was kind of a, this took me a lot longer than I thought it would. I didn't think this was gonna be a big job at all. So, okay, let's just make sure everything still works. And it does, good. So it looks like one LED is out right here. It's interesting. Not sure what to make of that. So it doesn't matter. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. So let's put it back together here. And this thing should close now. Oh, yeah. All right, now it shuts nice and easy here. My thumb screw in. Looks pretty cool, right, guys? I lost one of my thumb screws. Oh, it's right here. Uh, I really hate these stupid thumb screws. My, my old case, you know, had like a mechanical latch. That was a lot better than this. But okay, this looks pretty badass though, guys. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's actually turn the light off and just kind of admire what's going on here. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that looks really cool. Let's make it even darker here. What do you guys think? Does that look badass or what? It's weird that on the camera, yeah, it, it's a red red glow, not orangey, but. Yeah, that's a big difference, guys. And, and uh, you know, that was, I'm not gonna say that was easy. It was, te it, it wasn't hard, it was tedious. It was just, it was annoying is what it was. <laughs> so, so we got this knob on the side here. You can turn it completely off or not. I definitely like that. And even though we lost an LED strip, I don't feel like we lost anything because it's really glowing all the way around. So, well, that was a good, that was a massive success, actually. So, all right, I tell you what, guys, you want, you want to hang out? You want to, you want to do some viewer mail and stuff? Yeah, why don't we do that real quick? Look at this. Woot. Woot. guys there you have it that was our led strip mod for our gaming pc and what'd you guys think huh i'll tell you what i think that was a massive success that thing is so cool it's like 10 times cooler than it was so 
yes, I hope you enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. Actually, it was a lot of, it was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, but it all turned out great. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. So anyway, I thought we'd do some viewer mail. If you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, uh, you need to email them to me at blkdog7 at gmail.com. That's blackdog7 at gmail.com. In the subject line, you have to put viewer mail. Actually, I'm sorry. For this channel, you need to put John Space Sucks. Okay, two words. John Space Sucks in the subject line. That way I can find them. Uh, okay, so let's let's go on to the first one here from Scott. Uh, hey, John, did you finish playing Firewatch? If so, I'm curious as to what you thought of the last quarter of the game. Thanks, Scott Washburn. Well, Scott, uh, no, I, I didn't finish it. <laughs> and if you guys know anything about me, I, I don't finish a lot of games. <laughs> I kind of have ADD in a way when it comes to gaming, but I'll tell you this though, Firewatch actually really did capture my attention. It's a very unique game, and I think we will revisit it on Twitch. Uh, so, Scott, no, I haven't finished it. I don't think the game's very long, so I would like to go back to Firewatch if, if you guys want to see me do that. And by the way, I do have a Twitch channel if you guys want to watch me stream live at twitch.tv slash blkdog7. That's twitch.tv slash blackdog7, which is spelled blkdog7. And I, I try to stream one or two times a week, and then if the video I think is is good or worthy, I will transfer it to YouTube. But if you want to catch all of my streaming, you got to go over to Twitch. Uh, so yes, I, I think we can revisit Firewatch. That was a very cool, unique game, and I want to know what's up with that that woman I was talking to on the walkie-talkie. She was kind of sexy, I think. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, next one is from Gustavo. Actually, this one came to our VGO email, uh, which is our, our my podcast at VideoGameOutsiders.com. Um, and it says, uh, "Hey guys, longtime listener, first time writer. I don't really have a qu I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to say that I love the show. It's definitely brought humor to my otherwise boring ass morning commute. All the talk about John building a PC has inspired me to build my own. I'm loving the wonderful world of PC gaming now." Uh, thanks to Matt and Michelle for keeping John in check <laughs> when he's running his mouth off about boring Nintendo Animal Crossing decoration bullshit and to John for being an annoying yet lovable oaf. That's on my business card, by the way. So, you guys and John Rock, keep up the good work, Gus. So, yeah, Gus, you know, we've, I've gotten a lot of messages on VGO and also on this channel and also emails and, and, and Twitter, people telling me that they've built a gaming PC ever since I did my little, my little series. And I'm going to tell you guys, I encourage you to do this because that gaming PC has really changed how I game. I, I'm not kidding because I had an Xbox One and a Wii U prior. And you know what? That Xbox One doesn't really have a serious purpose in my life anymore besides like streaming Netflix and stuff because um, when it comes to gaming I'd rather just buy it for the PC because I have the ultra wide monitor and it's always gonna look better and and a lot of times it's it's less expensive the games are always on sale on Steam and stuff so Gus I I'm glad you built the PC I hope it's working out well for you and, and I certainly don't regret mine did, did you bling yours by the way did you put some LED lights inside of it <laughs> all right the next one here is from Paris 220 uh, dear John, I think you should stream Hearthstone sometime and let your chatters tell you what cards to play. You know what? I've been thinking about this, Paris. I, I do want to play Hearthstone on Twitch because uh, I actually got really into Hearthstone when it first came out. I, I, I was playing it like crazy on my iMac upstairs and I was a little addicted to it. I, I did kind of burn out a little bit and I started playing a little bit on my phone and my iPad, but I haven't really played Hearthstone in a long time. So I think this is a good idea. And you know, it would be fun if you guys are, you know, are watching the live stream can help me because I, I do suck. And, and actually that's what's been fun about Twitch by the way, is that, you know, I've been playing Dark Souls a lot on Twitch and uh, I'm very bad at it, like horrible at, at, at Dark Souls. But what's been fun for me is you guys. And I want to thank you guys for all the encouragement and help that you guys are giving me when I'm playing these games. Because there's been so many times, especially in Dark Souls, when I've been stuck. Like, I didn't know what to do. And, and the viewers are telling me exactly what to do. And it's and, and still challenging. Even though they're telling me what to do, it's still a challenge. But it, it really has been keeping my frustration level down, especially on Dark Souls. So, so thanks, everyone, that's been helping me on Twitch. It's been a lot of fun. And it's kind of been what my channel has kind of morphed into in a way where... 
I'm a big dummy playing these games and you guys are helping me. So maybe we could do that with Hearthstone. So this is a good idea. So I I'd like to play Hearthstone the next week or so here. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Maybe we could play with Michelle or something. And actually, uh, Overwatch is coming out uh, tomorrow on Monday. So I don't know. We'll be playing that too. So anyway, if you want to keep up with the Twitch stuff, twitch.tv slash blkdog7. So guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've never subscribed, go ahead and click subscribe. I release, well, on this channel here, on, on John Sucks at Video Games, I try to stream at least once a week, and I'm going to try doing more of these kind of tech videos, and I actually have something lined up right now that we need to do, because I had something break, and I'm going to try to fix it on this channel here. So if you want to keep up with this stuff, click subscribe, um, and then I also do, you know, the Let's Play videos I do on Twitch, I'll, I'll move them over to YouTube if I feel they're worthy, but other than that, that's it for this video, hope you guys enjoyed it, send those viewer mails to blkdog7 at gmail.com. In the subject line, put uh, John Space Sucks. All right, guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you very soon. Later, and bye.